Good day, students. So welcome to part one of the Algebra 2 Tree Gram Regents Review for January 2014. Uh, in this installment, we are going to be going over problems one to five. More clips um, can be found on mapcodeserve.com slash testprep.html on the New York Regents exam. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at problem number one. So problem one says, what is the common difference in the sequence 2a plus 1, 4a plus 4, 6a plus 7, 8a plus 10, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so if we're looking at common difference here, what kind of sequence is this? Uh, a sequence that has a common difference is known as an arithmetic sequence. Okay, each term different from the subsequent term by a common difference or a constant term. Okay. So for, a, for an arithmetic sequence, the common difference D can be computed using the formula A sub N minus A sub N minus one, okay? So a term minus a term before it will give you the um, common difference. So in this uh, sequence we have here, we have four terms. Let's go ahead and uh, index them. So this is A1, the first term. This is the second term, A2. This is A3. And this is A4, okay? Now, um, if we want to find the common difference, we can pick any two con uh, consecutive terms and then we'll subtract a term from a term before it to get the common difference. All right, so uh, what did I just say? Well, we can find the common difference by computing A2 minus A1, or we can do A3 minus A2, or we can do A4 minus A3, okay? Minus A3. So any of these you can select and then you get exactly the same answer, all right? So for this problem, I would like to use the first two and A2 minus A1. So we're gonna use uh, D equals A2 minus A1. In this case, N is equal to two. All right, so what is A2? A2 is 4A plus four, and then A1 is 2A plus 1. So the common difference is going to be 4A plus 4 minus, and you have to be really careful whenever you're subtracting two binomials, you must, um, sub, the second time you're subtracting from the first, you have to encapsulate it in the parentheses 2A plus 1. Now, why is it important for us to make use of this parentheses? It is because this minus affects both terms of this binomial right here. So if I want to um, go to the next step, which involves um, simplifying this expression by distributing this negative, this minus goes to the first term and the second term, okay? So this is gonna become 4a plus four minus 2a minus one. Okay, so this is a big mistake most people make. They forget to distribute that minus to this plus right here, or they forget to use a parenthesis, which makes it a plus. And um, let's, let's solve this. 4a minus 2a gives you 2a, and then plus 4 minus 1 gives you positive 3. All right, so we can clearly see that the answer is option number 1. Now, had it been we forgot to distribute the minus to this, we would have had 4 plus 1, which is 5, and then we'll fall into the trap of selecting option 3. So whenever you're subtracting binomials, please, please, please do not forget to distribute the minus to both terms um, of the quantity that the minus sign is in front of, okay? All right, let's take a look at problem number 2. So problem, problem 2 involves the use of one of the properties of exponents. It says which expression? is equivalent to 3x squared raised to the negative one power. Now, there is a there is a property of exponents. If you have a to the negative one, a to the um, negative m, this is the uh, one of the properties of exponents, a to the negative m equals one over a to the m. Now, do you remember what property of exponents this is? This is the negative exponent property, okay? Negative exponent, so the reciprocal property of exponents, negative exponents. All right, so that's what we're going to be applying here. 
So uh, we have 3x squared raised to the negative 1. So what the negative exponents property tells us that is that if you have a negative 1 as the exponent, you just simply reciprocate um, the arguments of the exponential expression, okay? So with that negative, this entire thing goes down. So we're going to have 1 over 3x squared raised to the first power. Okay, so that negative means you reciprocate whatever um, is inside the parentheses of the uh, term that has been exponentiated with a negative exponent. Okay, so if you have this, now what we're going to do in the denominator, you're going to use another property of exponents, which is the power of a product of powers. We're going to distribute this power to the two terms inside the parentheses. So we're going to have 3 raised to the first power times x squared raised to the first power. Okay, so this becomes 1 over 3x squared. And we can clearly see that our answer is option number 1. All right, let's take a look at problem 3. In problem 3, uh, we're told that if g of x is 1 half x plus 8, and h of x is 1 half x minus 2, what is the value of g of h of negative 8? Okay, so this is a situation where you're composing two functions and evaluating a resulting uh, composite function at a particular x value. Okay, so there are two ways you can do this problem. <clears throat> the first way is you compose the two functions and plug in the input value into x. Or the second way is you evaluate the inner function at a specified x value and then evaluate your final result at, uh, by plugging it into the outermost function, okay? So I'm going to use the second method here. So let me put down the steps so that we know what we're doing. So for, first of all, you're going to find the inner function. I'm going to make that blue. You're going to find h, h of negative 8, okay? You find h of negative 8. Now, after finding h of negative 8, you resolve the inner piece. Secondly, you're going to find, uh, you're going to find, um, let's make the other one red, g of h of negative 8. Okay? g of h of negative 8. So what on earth is g of h of negative 8? It's basically what you get when you plug in your answer from step one into G, okay? So we just take whatever answer we get here and then we just plug it in here, okay? Into the G function and that tells us what the final answer is, all right? So let's go ahead and uh, follow these steps to find out the result of this composite function e e evaluated at X equals negative eight. So we're gonna do step one. We know that H of X is what? What is H of X is one half X minus two so um, h of negative 8 simply means that wherever we have x in the function h, we're going to uh, plug in negative 8, all right? So we're going to have 1 half. Instead of x, we have negative 8, okay? Negative 8 minus 2. So all I'll just do here is basically simplify this expression um, using all of operations, okay? So this negative 8 can be written as a fraction, negative 8 over 1. So we just multiply this across. So that's going to give us um, 1 times negative 8 is negative 8 over 2 minus 2. And then you can divide this. 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 4. And then um, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. All right? So that's the value of h of negative 8. All right, so we have completed step one. Now let's move along to step number two. Step number two is to find g of h of negative eight. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. We're looking for um, g of h of negative eight. Okay. All right. How do we how do we uh, evaluate this expression? Well, what we're going to do first is let's identify the the function that the parent function because that's what comes first. The parent function is g of x. So g of x is, um, what is g of x? Is this function right here, 1 half x plus 8. 
Now we're going to evaluate this function at h of negative 8. Okay? But to make our lives easy, we already know what h of negative 8 is. h of negative 8 is negative 6. So this expression, g of h of negative 8, is the same thing as g of what? g of negative 6. Okay? So all we're just going to do here, let's write that again. All we're just going to do here is take in negative 6 and plug it into the x right there. Okay? So that's what g of negative 6 is going to be. So let's go ahead and write that down. g of negative 6 um, is equal to 1 half times negative 6 plus 8. Okay? Let's so write that again. Uh, is equal to 1 half times negative 6 plus 8. Okay, so to simplify this, we're going to use um, order of operations. We'll start with this uh, multiplication piece right here. So if we multiply 1 half and negative 6, we can write this as negative 6 over 1. Okay, and then multiplied across, we have negative 6 over 3. I'm sorry, negative 6 over 2 plus 8. So negative 6 divided by 2 is going to be negative 3. Negative 3 plus 8 is equal to positive 5. Okay, so we can clearly see that our answer is option number 3. All right, let's take a look at number 4. We have to find the, uh, it says the expression 1 over 7 minus root 11 is equivalent to, and if you look at all the options we have here, they do not have a square root in the denominator. So uh, a process has been carried out on this um, original expression. So we have 1 over 7 minus the square root of 11. Now, how do you address the whole idea of situation of having a square root in the denominator? To get rid of a square root in the denominator, you rationalize, right? So you multiply by the um, denominator expression by inverting the sign of the uh, the term, the sign in between the two terms. So in essence, what you're trying to do is create a perfect square uh, binomial. No, not a perfect square binomial. I meant to say you're creating a difference of squares. Yes, that, a difference of squares. So what is a difference of squares? A difference of squares is, is an expression written as a square minus b square. How, how is, if you factor a difference of squares, this is going to be a plus b times a minus b, okay? So if I create a, a difference of squares in the denominator, we're gonna have the square root of these two terms, and we know that the square of a square root is just uh, a whole number, it gets rid of the square root, okay? So how do we create a difference of squares in the denominator? We already have the difference of the two terms, now we need to insert the sum of the two terms in the denominator. So we're gonna insert seven plus with 11. We're gonna multiply the denominator by that, okay? But since we do not wanna change the problem, whatever we multiply the denominator with, we multiply the numerator by exactly the same thing, okay? So look at the denominator. What did we just create? We cre we've created a difference of squares. This can be viewed as a minus b, this portion right here, times a plus b. And if you multiply a minus b times a plus b, what do you get? If you, if you foil it out, the middle terms, negative minus ab plus ab cancel out, and you end up with a squared minus b squared. That's the expanded form of a difference of squares right here. Okay, so um, let's work this out. In the numerator, just multiply by one, you have seven plus root 11. Now in the denominator, we don't have to do it the long way. We can use a shortcut. We know that this is the expanded form of a difference of squares. So if we work it out, I mean the factored form, so if we work it out, we're gonna have seven square, like a square minus root 11 square, okay? If you wanted to follow this out first outer inner last, that's fine. You're gonna have negative seven root 11 plus seven root 11 in the center and those two terms will drop off, and then you have root 11 
times root 11, that gives you root 11 squared. So you're going to end up with this expression anyway. Okay, I just want you to get used to the shortcut so you don't waste time and make mistakes. Okay, so let's simplify this. This becomes 7 plus root 11 divided by 7 squared is 49. Now, the beauty of this whole process is that when you square a square root, these two are inverse operations, so they cancel out, and you're left with 11. Now, you have no more square roots in the denominator, which is the goal of the whole process. Okay? So, let's combine the denominator. We'll have 7 plus root 11 divided by 38. All right? So, we can see that our final answer is option number 1. All right, let's take a look at the last uh, number in this uh, series, this installment. We have this expression here, and we are asked to find an equivalent expression to this expression right here. All right, so we have um, a plus b over c divided by um, divided by what? Divided by d minus b over c. Now, anytime you have a situation where you have a fraction in the numerator or the denominator, I want to get rid of all the fractions. Um, all you simply do is you find the LCD, okay? What you do is you take all the terms that you have in the expression, express them as a fraction if they are not already a fraction. This is not a fraction, so write it as A over 1. This is not a fraction, so write it as B over 1. So what is the LCD of 1, 1, C, and C? What is the LCD of 1 and C? The LCD of 1 and C is C, okay? 1 goes into C, C times C goes into C once. So what we're going to do to eliminate the denominators is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the LCD, okay? So the LCD is C. They're just right here. LCD of 1 and C is equal to C. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by C. And then multiply the denominator by C also. Okay, so I'm going to distribute this C uh, to the numerator. Um, so if I do that, I'm going to have AC um, plus BC over C over, well, let's put the one there. Um, and then here, we, here we're going to have DC minus B. C over C. Okay? So notice that I distributed this C to both terms on the top. Okay? And then to both terms on the bottom. The goal was to eliminate the denominator, right? So let's see if we can accomplish that. AC over AC is just, I mean, AC over 1 is just AC. BC over C, the C's cancel out plus B. So look at the numerator. We've already gotten rid of the fraction, which is excellent. And if you shift your attention to the denominator, it's supposed to be dc over 1. We're going to have dc over 1 is just dc minus these two c's cancel out. And you're left with minus b. So we got rid of the fraction in the numerator and the denominator just by simply multiplying by the LCD of the denominators of all the terms. So we have AC plus B over, over um, DC minus B. We can also write this as AC plus B over um, CD minus B. Because we know multiplication commutes just like addition, right? So DC has the same thing as uh, CD. So we, let's see which one is our answer. Our correct answer is option number three. Okay, so that's that. And thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Now feel free to subscribe to our channel. Also, you can get updates to um, other cool clips such as this. And do give us a thumbs up if you like this clip. We we'll really appreciate it. More clips can be found on mathgotserve.com slash testprep.html. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.